going to be working going to be working the uh, solutions for Lopatel's rule 37 so uh, let's get started there are a lot of problems in this section all right so number one we're asked to find a limit so we're back to limits again but now we have the all-powerful, wonderful L'Hopital's rule. So what we, what we need to do when we're using L'Hopital's rule is to make sure that when we apply the limit, we have either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And here it doesn't matter if it's plus or minus there on top or bottom. One of those two forms we have to have to use the rule. Now, if I let x go to one here, we get 1 squared minus 1, the top is headed to 0, the bottom is 1 minus 1, that's going to head to 0. So we do have what we need for L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to say that this is equal to, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x approaches 1. Then all we do is take the derivative on the top, which is uh, 2x, and divide that by the derivative on the bottom, which is 2x minus 1. And now we apply the limit again. So let's let x approach 1. We get 2 on top. And on the bottom, we get uh, 2 take away 1, we get 1. So the limit here is 2. Now, what we could have done, just to show you, you know, how we would have handled this before, is we would have factored the top as a difference of squares we would have factored the bottom GCF we would have canceled these factors and then we would have just plugged in one here we would have got one plus one is two and here we would have plugged in one we would have got one two over one is two we get the same answer but we were able to do that without using any algebra at all just using the rule L'Hopital's rule alright let's look at number three we have limit cosine goes to, uh, sorry, limit x goes to pi over 2 from the right of cosine x over 1 minus sine x. So let's, let's take a look here. Remember, uh, pi over 2 is the angle straight up here. So cosine of pi over 2 on the top is the x-coordinate there. The x-coordinate here is 0, so we get 0 over 1 minus sine of pi over 2, pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so we get 1 over 1, I'm sorry, um, 1 minus 1, which is 0 over 0. So we have what we need in order to apply L'Hopital's rule, so I'm going to apply it, write the same limit down. The derivative of the top is negative sine x, and the derivative of the bottom, well, derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of sine x is cosine x, but I have a negative in front of it. So negative cosine x. Uh, the negative over negative becomes positive, And we have sine x over cosine x. Now let's try this again. Let's see what happens. Or you know what, better yet, let's just rewrite this as tangent. I think that'll be a little easier for us to mess with. This is just tangent x. So it's asking, what, what happens as you approach pi over 2 from the right on the tangent function? So for this, I'm actually going to go to the graph of tangent. If we graph the tangent function, it looks like this. And we have a vertical asymptote at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And then, so here's our asymptote here, asymptote here. And then what happens is it repeats itself. It does the same thing over here. Vertical asymptote here and here. So what happens on the tangent function is I approach pi over 2 from the right. So here's pi over 2 from the right. I'm on the tangent function. I'm headed, I'm headed towards negative infinity. So this thing goes to negative infinity, or here, negative infinity. Now we, we could have also got this by not turning it into tangent and just leaving it as this, and then looking at the unit circle again. 
Um, <clears throat> and looking at pi over 2 again, that's the point zero 1, sine of pi over 2, that goes to 1, cosine of pi over 2 goes to 0. So here we have fixed over 0. Anytime we have fixed over 0, remember we had three possibilities, infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist. And that's where you would have to like pick a sample point and approach it from the side and see what happens. But I think this was much easier just to look at the tangent function rather than to do the, the fixed over zero part. Okay, next one. Limit x goes to zero. By the way, this is number four. Limit x approaches zero of sine of 4x over tangent of 5x. Now if x goes to 0, 4 times 0 is 0, sine of 0 is 0, so we get 0 on top. x goes to 0, 5 times 0 is 0, tangent of 0 is also 0, so we do have the appropriate form we need to use L'Hopital's rule, which I will do now. And this becomes derivative of the top. So be careful because we have 4x inside. So derivative of, it's chain rule. So derivative of sine of something is cosine of that something times the derivative of what's inside, which is just 4, over now the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that something times the derivative of what's inside, which is 5. And now let's let x go to 0 again. 4 times 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So the top is going to 1 times 4, so 4, over secant squared of 5 times 0, 5 times 0 is 0. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what is secant <coughs> squared of 0? Well, that's the same as 1 over cosine of 0, that's secant squared. Cosine of 0 is 1, 1 over 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So the, this right here is just going to 1 times 5. So 4 fifths, that's your answer. Alright, number 5. Limit t goes to 0. And e to the 2t minus 1 over sine t. So let's get, let t go to 0. 2 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the top is 0. And sine of 0 is 0. So we have the appropriate form we need for L'Hopital's rule. We apply the rule. Limit t goes to 0. Derivative of the top, we have two terms, right? Derivative of e to anything is itself. Chain rule says times derivative of what's up here. So derivative of what's up there is 2. And so we're done with derivative of e to the 2t. Minus the derivative of 1, which is 0. So that's it. That's all we have. Over derivative of sine of t is cosine t. Now let's let t go to 0. Uh, 2 times 0 is 0 e to the 0 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, so we have 2 on top, and then cosine of 0 is 1, so we get 2 over 1, which is 2, there it is. Number 7, theta goes to pi over 2, One minus sine theta over one plus cosine two theta. Just check to see what this was here. Okay. All right, so let's just check it. Um, Pi over 2 is going to go in for theta. Sine of pi over 2, that's 1. We just did that on the unit circle a second ago. 
So we get one minus one on top, that's headed towards zero. Let's see, um, two, times, two times pi over two goes here, the twos cancel, that's just pi. Cosine of pi, so go back here, pi is here, that's our angle pi. Cosine is the x-coordinate, which is negative one. So this right here goes to negative one, one plus negative one is zero. So we have the appropriate form that we need for L'Hopital's rule. So I can apply it. Limit theta goes to pi over two. And derivative of the top. We have two different terms. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of sine is cosine. But we have a minus, so minus cosine theta. Over derivative of one is zero. And then be careful here because this is chain rule. We have cosine of something. Derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of that something times derivative of what's inside, derivative of two theta is two. And now we're gonna try again. So theta goes to pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, negative zero is still zero, so we get zero on top. And now let's try this. We're gonna plug pi over two in right here. So um, if we plug in pi over two right there, two times pi over two, we just get pi and sine of pi is the y-coordinate over here. Oh, that's negative one. Did I put negative one earlier? I don't know, it's supposed to be negative one. I think I might have put one. Ah, I don't know. Okay, sine of pi is gonna be zero. So this, is, this whole thing right here is zero, and then times two is zero, so the bottom is zero. So we still have zero over zero. And that means that the L'Hopital's rule did not fix it yet. Let's try and take the derivative again, or let's try L'Hopital's rule again, apply the rule twice. The reason we can apply the rule again is because we still have zero over zero. If this came out to be something like, you know, four over two, or sorry, like four over zero, um, then we would have to do something else. But the fact that it's zero over zero means we can apply the rule again. So this is gonna be equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over two of the derivative of the top. So derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta, but then we have minus, so it's gonna turn into a plus sine theta. Over, now on the bottom, remember this right here is really negative two sine two theta. That's what that is, we just move this two out front. And this is a constant, I'm gonna be taking the derivative, it's gonna come for the ride, negative two times Derivative of sine of something is cosine of the something times the derivative of what's in here, which is another two. And now I try again. So if I let theta go to pi over two, sine of pi over two, there's where we are, that's not where we are, sorry. Sine is the y coordinate, so this is just gonna be one over, all right, cosine of two times pi over two, two times pi over two, we've done this several times now, it's just pi. Cosine of pi, that means we're here, is the x coordinate, that's negative one. So this, this right here, this right here is negative one. So I have negative two times negative one, which is two, times two again, this is four, so we should get one fourth. That's it, we're done. <clears throat> so that's our first example where we had to apply L'Hopital's rule twice. Seems dark in here. Let's make sure all these lights are on. That was number seven. Number eight's next. Just double check these lights. Ah, I thought there was a light off. Okay. Number eight. Limit as theta goes to pi over two. of 
1 minus sine theta over cosecant theta. All right, so theta is going to go to pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2, we already said, was 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is headed towards 0 over. Now, cosecant of pi over 2. So let me see what happens here. Cosecant theta is really 1 over sine theta. And if I plug in um, pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we should get 1 over 1. Let me see if I wrote that down right. Yeah? Okay, I'm just double checking this because we don't have to do anything here. Um, here's pi over 2. We got the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So sine of pi over 2 is the y coordinate. That's 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Um, Sine of pi over 2, we just said is 1, that's 1 over 1. So this bottom part is just 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. There's nothing, there's nothing to do here. There's no L'Hopital rule at all. So I think this problem is just to illustrate, don't go trying to do L'Hopital on everything, because if it's not 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you can't use the rule. And in this case, we just have a nice clean answer and we're done. All right, number 9. Limit x approaches 0 from the right. Of natural log x over x. All right. So let's see what happens here. What happens to the natural log function as we approach 0 from the right? So let me graph the natural log function. Natural log function looks like this. So as we approach 0 from the right, this heads to negative infinity over, and then the bottom is headed towards 0. Um, and it's coming in from the right, so it's little positive numbers. So what happens here? Um, there's two ways you can look at this. Well, here's one way. You can rewrite this as 1 over um, 0 times negative infinity. So just kind of like sliding this off to the side. And we can ask ourselves, okay, what happens if you have a fixed number that's positive, 1 is positive, over a number that's getting smaller but, being po but is also positive? So remember, if you have fixed over 0, that's going to be infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist. In this case, since the numerator and denominator are both positive, this is going to go to positive infinity. If you take a huge huge positive number, right? And multiply it times a very huge negative number, you're going to get a very huge negative number. So you're going to get negative infinity. So this is another illustration where we did not need L'Hopital's rule. In fact, we could not use L'Hopital's rule because we did not have what we needed. All right, number 10. The problem with L'Hopital is that people will start getting like so happy about it that they just start doing L'Hopital on everything, and you can't. All right, limit as x goes to infinity of natural log of the square root of x over x squared. All right, so what happens if I start letting x go to infinity here? This gets huge. Square root of infinity is still infinite. Natural log of infinity means if we look at the natural log function, which we just looked at, what happens is we start going out this way. What happens to the natural log function? Well, it starts to grow without bounds, so it becomes infinite also. So the top here is headed towards infinity. And then, of course, infinity squared is going to be infinity. So we get infinity over infinity. We are allowed to use L'Hopital's rule because we have this. So I'm going to bring in L'Hopital's rule. And I guess, I guess I could just use L'Hopital's rule right now. Take derivative of the top and the bottom separately and figure out what it is. But I realize I'm going to have chain rule on that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to rewrite this. 
as natural log of x to the one half. That's what that means, because square root of x means x to the one half. Then I'm going to use property of logs to pull the one half out. And so that is the top rewritten. That's this rewritten. And now I will take a derivative. The derivative of this, the one half comes along for the ride. The derivative of the natural log of x is one over x. So that's the top. And then the bottom we have just two x. Now let me try and clean this up a little bit because I've got kind of like a little complex fraction here. Got one over two x is the top over, the bottom is two x over one if I want to look at it like a fraction, that way I can write a fraction over a fraction. And then I flip reciprocal, so limit x goes to infinity of one over, so this flipped and became one over two x here, multiplication that's gone, and that gives us four x squared. And now if I let x go to infinity, I have a fixed number on top, the bottom is getting huge, so in a fraction if the top doesn't move, and the bottom gets big, the fraction gets small, this approaches zero. All right, my phone's going off here. Let me see what this is all about. Got to remember to get back to that. All right, where are we at? Number 11 now? Yeah. Limit t goes to 1. t to the eighth minus 1 over t to the fifth minus 1. All right. Uh, let's let t go to 1. 1 to the eighth power is 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 to the 5th power is 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have what we need for L'Hopital. Uh, t approaches 1. So I take the derivative of the top. Derivative of the top is just 8t to the 7th. Derivative of the bottom is 5t to the 4th. And let me keep going here. This is I'm going to just algebraically clean this up. This t to the seventh over t to the fourth is t cubed. So I have eight fifths t cubed. And now I go ahead and take um, the limit, let t go to one, t cubed is, or one cubed is one, times eight fifths, the answer is eight fifths. That's where it's headed. That was pretty clean. Twelve. Limit t goes to zero. Of eight to the t times five to the t or minus five to the t over t. So let's let t go to zero. Eight to the zero is one minus 5 to the 0 is also 1 over the bottom is headed to 0. So this is going to 0 over 0. So that's where it's headed. I can apply L'Hopital's rule. Limit t goes to 0. And let me be careful with these derivatives. The derivative of 8 raised to the t, that's an exponential function, is itself, and remember this from class, times natural log 8. So this is the one where we had like um, a raised to the x. The derivative was itself times natural log a. So that's what I'm using there. 
Then I have minus, this is another exponential function, so the derivative of that's going to be 5 to the t times natural log 5. All of this over the derivative of t, which is just 1. And this should be good, because now if I let t go to 0, 8 to the 0 is 1 times natural log 8 minus 5 to the 0 is 1 times natural log 5, so I get natural log 5. And I'm sure the back of the book is going to have this written instead because they're just going to use property of logs. Subtraction between two logs becomes a single log with division. So they just condense it down and we're done. Thirteen. Limit x goes to zero. e to the x minus 1 minus x over x squared. x goes to 0. e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus 0 again. The top is headed towards 0. And the bottom, of course, 0 squared is 0. So we get 0 over 0. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. Derivative of e to the x is itself. Great. Derivative of negative 1 is 0. Derivative of negative x is negative 1 over derivative of x squared is 2x. I apply the limit again. x goes to 0. e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'm headed to 0 on top. On the bottom, 2 times 0 is 0. So I have 0 over 0 again. That's fine. I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule again. Derivative of e to the x is itself. Minus derivative of 1 is 0, so there's nothing there. Derivative of 2x is 2. And now let x go to 0 again. So e to the 0 is 1, 1 over 2. That's just 1 half. I'm knocking these out. All right, number 14. Limit u goes to infinity of e to the u over 10. I'm going to rewrite that as 1 tenth u. Right. u over 10 is the same as 1 tenth u. And then over u cubed. All right, let's let u go to infinity. 1 tenth of infinity is still infinity. e to the infinity means... If you look at the exponential function, what happens is you start going out to infinity here. Well, the function obviously starts going up to infinity. So the top is headed towards infinity, and then the bottom, infinity cubed, is still infinity. So you have infinity over infinity. So we'll do L'Hopital's rule, because we can. L'Hopital. Derivative of e to anything is itself. times chain rule here. We have to take derivative of what's up here. The derivative of what's up there is 1 tenth. Over derivative of u cubed is 3u squared. And then we try again. u goes to infinity. We already said that this will go to infinity. Infinity times a tenth is still infinity. So we have infinity on top. Infinity squared is infinity times 3 is still infinity. So we have infinity over infinity. Let's do L'Hopital again. Derivative of e to anything is itself. Chain rule says times derivative of what's inside. And I didn't mention this, but the one-tenth was a constant, so it was just going to come for the ride, so there's another one-tenth. All over derivative of bottom, which is 6u. And hopefully you picked up on the pattern here. What's happening is that every time we do this, we get infinity over infinity, right? We got infinity over infinity here. Here we're going to get, again, infinity times a tenth, times a tenth, still infinity, over, look, six times infinity, still infinity. So we keep on getting infinity over infinity. However, the denominator keeps going down by a power each time. And the numerator, I just keep on getting that e to the one-tenth u every time. It's not going to go away. 
but the power on the bottom will start to go down eventually, let's see here on the next line, when, when I do derivative on top again, this is a constant, it's going to come for the ride, I'm going to get e to the one tenth u times one tenth times one tenth times one tenth. I could just do one tenth cubed and I could make that a one one thousandth, but I'll just leave it. The derivative bottom is six. Now the denominator is no longer going to infinity. The numerator, however, is. That's infinite times all this. So what you have here is like infinity over six, and that's still infinite. So your answer here is that it is infinite. Okay. Let me go check the time on this video. 30 minutes. In about 15 more minutes, I'll go to 10 o'clock. <whistles> 15. Limit. X goes to zero. X times 3 raised to the X over 3 to the X minus 1. All right, let's just check to see that we have what we need here. X goes to 0. 0 times, let's see, 3 to the 0 is 1. So 0 times 1 is 0. The top's headed towards 0. 3 to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so we get 0 over 0. Wonderful. It's OK, L'Hopital. L'Hopital. All right, I have to take derivative of the top. Product rule. I think that's the first time we've had that happen. Uh, derivative of the first one is 1 times the second one plus the derivative of the second one. That's an exponential. So derivative of 3 to the x is 3 to the x times natural log 3. Don't forget that part. And then times the derivative of the first one, I mean, sorry, times the first one, which is just x. So there's your product rule up top. And then derivative of the bottom, two terms, that's going to be 0. Derivative of 3 to the x is itself 3 to the x times natural log 3. All right. Well, it looks like at this point you could start letting x go to 0 again, but let me just clean this up. Notice that in the numerator I have 3 to the x here and 3 to the x here. So I could factor out a 3 to the x and I would have 1 plus um, x natural log 3. So I pull this 3 to the x out, there's a 1 there, pull that one out and I have these two pieces here which is this all over 3 to the x times natural log 3 these cancel. And now I let x go to 0. If that's 0, that's gone. I just get a 1 on top, 1 over, and then natural log 3. OK. 1 over natural log 3. Interesting answer. Sixteen. Limit x goes to zero. Cosine mx minus cosine nx over x squared. All right, so let's do this. x is going to zero. m and n are constants here. Some number times 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. Some number times 0 is 0. And then cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0 on top. And on the bottom, of course, 0 squared is still 0. So we can do L'Hopital. All right, we've got to be careful here. Derivative of cosine of something, right, chain rule, is going to be negative sine of that something times the derivative of what's inside, the derivative of mx is m, right? If that was a 5x, it would be 5. If that was 10x, it would be 10. So since it's mx, it's just m. 
Then we have minus the derivative of cosine of something again, which is negative sine of nx times the derivative of what's inside, which is n. Now I put the parentheses here because I'm going to have a double negative, so it's just proper notation. Then all of this over 2x, derivative of the bottom. All right, I'm going to change this. I'm going to take this parenthesis off. Take this parenthesis off. Make that a plus here. And now let's let x go to 0. We get here 0, right? 0, uh, zero times m is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So this is 0 here. Same thing here, that's 0. Sine of 0 is 0. 0, the whole thing here. 0 plus 0. So we have 0 on top. And on the bottom we have um, 0 also, if we let x go to 0. So I'm going to have to do L'Hopital again. L'Hopital. L'Hopital. All right, this is a constant. You could look at this as being like a negative m out front. It's just going to come for the ride. So here's my negative m. I'm bringing it along for the ride. Times. Derivative of sine of something is cosine of that something. But then chain rule says derivative of what's inside, which is just m. All right, here I have an n is a constant. It's going to come for the ride, so I'm going to say plus n. Now, derivative of sine of something here is cosine something times derivative of what's inside, which is n. All of this over 2. Derivative of 2x is 2. And now I will let x go to 0. So if x goes to 0, this is uh, cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm going to have negative m times 1 times m. That's negative m squared. And then I'm going to have cosine of 0 again, which is 1. And then I have n times n. That's going to be plus n squared all over 2. There you go. That's weird. It's a general answer because we don't know what m and m are. m and n are. Our answer is going to be in terms of m and n. So if someone gave me like an m and an n in there, then I'd, I would have an answer. Seventeen. Limit. X goes to one. One minus x plus natural log x. Over one plus cosine pi x. All right, let's let x go to 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Natural log of 1, you better know this. Natural log of 1, here's natural log. Natural log of 1 is 0. So 1 minus 1 is 0 plus 0, that's 0 on top. Over, let's see, if I, this is pi x. If I replace this with 1, this is pi. Cosine of pi. Pi is over here, cosine's the x coordinate, negative 1. So this is negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So we get 0. 0 over 0. L'Hopital. 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 All right, derivative of the top 0. Derivative of negative x, negative 1. Derivative of natural log of x, 1 over x. Done on top. Derivative 1, 0. Derivative of cosine of something. Negative sine of that something times derivative of what's inside. Derivative of pi x is just pi. Let x go to 1 again. Uh-oh. x goes to 1. 1 over 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus 1. That's 0 on top. Uh-oh. OK. Pi here, pi times 1, that's sine of pi. I'm trying to figure out what sine of pi is. We just did that on that unit circle. It was over here. 
that was a zero, so it's going to zero at the bottom. Okay, well, got to do L'Hopital again. I'm not, I'm not feeling good about this. Looks like it's going to get a little bit messy here, but we'll see. All right, derivative of negative 1 is 0. Okay, derivative of 1 over x. Remember, 1 over x is really x to the negative 1, and if we take the derivative, it's negative 1x to the negative 2, and that's really negative 1 over x squared. Okay, I've done that enough, and I think you can follow that if you just pause the video and look at it. That's that. So, derivative of this, negative 1 over x squared, over. Ooh. Okay. Pi here, negative, negative pi, that's a constant. It's going to come for the ride. Derivative of sine of something. Right, I've already taken care of the negative and the pi. Derivative of sine of something is cosine of that something. Times derivative of what's inside, which is pi again. And now I hope for the best here. If x is 1, this is negative 1 over 1 squared. That's negative 1 on top. So that is headed towards negative 1 on top over, see, cosine of pi times 1, that's pi. Cosine of pi, we said that was negative 1. So this was negative 1. So negative pi times negative 1 is pi. Then times pi again, that's pi squared. Oh, that's it. L'Hopital is awesome. Nineteen. This will be my last one. Well, maybe not. You know what? I'll be right back. I can't pause it. Well, I, can, I guess I could stop the video. Let me stop the video and then I'll start over again. All right, I'm going to continue here. Number 19. Limit. X goes to 1. X to the A minus ax plus a minus 1 over x minus 1 squared. All right. So a here is a constant. x is our variable. Let's let x go to 1. So 1 raised to any power is 1. So that's 1. Um, minus a times 1 is just a plus a minus 1. So that's the top, that's 0. And then 1 minus 1 is 0, squared is 0. So we have 0 of 0. Bring in L'Hopital. Derivative of the top. All right, well, this is x to a power. So that's like, you know, x to the fifth. We use power rule. 5 comes out, right? So here a comes out x to the a minus 1. I don't know what a is, so that's the way I have to write it. Minus derivative of a times x is just minus a. That's a constant, that's a constant. So derivative of both of those are 0. Uh, this should be minus a down here, like that. And then derivative of this, this is chain rule. We have something squared, so 2 pops out then x minus 1 to the first power times the derivative of what's inside, which is just a 1. All right, so that's it. Let x go to 1. 1 raised to any power is 1. So that's a times 1. That's a. a minus a is 0. x um, is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. So we still have 0 over 0. So that equals, by L'Hopital's rule again, all right, so I have to do the derivative of this. The a is a constant. It's going to come for the ride. This is x to a power. The power comes out front. So 
I already had an a there. Now an a minus 1 drops out. x to the, well, I have to subtract 1 from this again, so that's a minus 2. And then derivative of a constant here is 0, so just this, over the derivative of this here. 2 is a constant, comes for the ride. Derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. And now let's let x go to 1 again. 1 to any power is 1. So you're going to get a times a minus 1 all over 2. Interesting answer. It's just a busy, busy day. Done, done, done. Right, 19 is done. Twenty one. Limit X goes to zero of cosine X minus one plus one half X squared over X to the fourth. If X goes to zero, Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That goes to 0. That's all 0. So we get zeros on the top. On the bottom, of course, 0 to the 4th power is still 0. So I'm going to use L'Hopital. L'Hopital. Derivative of cosine x, negative sine x. Derivative of negative 1 is 0. Derivative of this, 2 pops out. Half of 2 is 1, so this just becomes plus x over 4x cubed. That's a 3. Try it again. x goes to 0. Sine of 0 is 0. That's a 0. That's a 0. So I get 0 on top. And of course 0 on the bottom again. L'Hopital again. Limit x goes to 0. Derivative of sine x is cosine x, but there was a negative out front. Derivative of uh, x is 1. Derivative of 4x cubed is 12x squared. Let x go to 0 again. Cosine of 0 is 1, but it's negative. So negative 1 plus 1, that's 0 on top. 0 on the bottom again. All right, L'Hopital again. Derivative, there's a negative here. I'm going to cover it up. Der derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, but then I make it negative again. So that's positive sine x. Derivative of 1 is 0 over, derivative of the bottom is 24x. Let x go to 0, sine of 0 is 0, over 0 again. L'Hopital again. <laughs> I think this is it. I think we're finally going to get it here. Derivative of sine x is cosine x. Derivative of 24x is 24. Let x go to 0. Cosine of 0 is 1 over 24. 1 24th. That's cool. I can't be there. Oops. Limit, x goes to 0. Cotangent 2x times sine of 6x. All right, this is getting ridiculous. The emails just keep pouring in. All right, so cotangent of 2x. You have to kind of know what happens. If x is 0, this is 0. Cotangent of 0, uh, you can go and take a look at the graph. Or you can remember that cotangent 
um, of 2x is the same as this. So what we have here is, uh, by the way, this is sine of 0, which is 0. So this is going to 0. And cotangent, well, why don't we just look at the graph of cotangent? <clears throat> I think that would probably be the easiest thing. And I believe your graphs are on page, where is it? Uh, reference page 2. So cotangent, if we look at cotangent, I could do this, it'll be fixed over 0, all that, but if I just look at the graph of cotangent, here's pi. We have acetote here and here, and it goes like this. Something like that. So as you can see, um, am I approaching from a certain side here? Hmm. Well, if I approach, let me, let me do it this way. It's not telling me which side to approach from. So if I come in on one side, cotangent of zero, come in, I'm infinite. If I come in the other side, I'm negative infinite. Either way, this is plus or minus infinity times zero. And this is still an indeterminate form. So I cannot figure out what that is. I have to do something. But it does not look like L'Hopital's rule. It does not look like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So this is where we use a little trick. What we do is we rewrite the problem. And we take one of these guys and we drop it to the bottom. So I'm going to leave the sign 6x here because it's nice. Over, I'm going to write the uh, cotangent 2x on the bottom as 1 over cotangent 2x. Because in reality, that would just flip back up and it would just be that. However, by doing it that way, I can now rewrite cotangent to 1 over cotangent 2x. I can rewrite that as tangent of 2x. And now let me see what happens when x goes to 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Tangent of 0, remember a graph of tangent looks like this. Tangent of 0 is 0 also. So now this looks like 0 over 0. So I've just rewritten the form of infinity times 0 as a different form of 0 over 0. And now I can use L'Hopital. So when I use L'Hopital here, I'm going to say this is equal to the limit as x goes to 0. I'm going to take derivative of the top, which is 6 cosine 6x and derivative of the bottom, which is 2 secant squared 2x. I hope you follow me there. Chain rule on both of those, and I just move the constants. The constants that pop out from here, I just moved them out front. Now let's let x go to 0. 6 times 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So the top is headed towards 6 times 1, which is 6. All right, secant of 0 is the same as 1 over cosine of 0 which is cosine of 0 is 1, so that's 1 over 1. This right here is 1, and then you square it, still 1, and then times 2, so you get 2. So the answer here is 3. <coughs> 25. Limit x goes to infinity. x cubed times e to the negative x squared. And it's going to be a little tricky. All right, so let's, what, let's see what happens when you let x go to infinity. You get infinity cubed, that's infinity, times, right, times e to the Infinity squared is infinity, but negative infinity. So that's a little tricky. e to the negative infinity, what, what that really means is look at your e function and don't head out, don't head out to positive infinity and, and tell me it's going up forever. You need to head to negative infinity, so you need to head this way. You can see that the function um, approaches zero asymptotically, so it's getting closer and closer to zero. So this is headed towards zero, this is headed towards 0, this is headed towards infinity. So we have infinity times 0 again, 
We are not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule for that, but when we see this, we take one of them and we drop it down. So I think the most natural one to drop down would be this one because it's a negative exponent. I can already just rewrite it on the bottom as a positive exponent, right? Now I have a fraction. X goes to infinity, the top goes to infinity. <laughs> infinity over now e to the positive infinity. That's where e goes up. That also goes to infinity. So I have infinity over infinity. I can use L'Hopital's rule. So this will be equal to, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x goes to infinity of the derivative of the top, 3x squared, over the derivative of the bottom. So be careful here. It's derivative of e to anything is itself times the derivative of what was up here, up there. The derivative of x squared is 2x. One of these x's cancels. So we have limit, x goes to infinity. I still have 3x on top. And on the bottom, I have 2e to the x squared. And now, look at it. x goes to infinity, 3 times infinity. That goes to infinity over e to the infinity squared. This is all infinite times 2, still infinity over infinity. So I go with L'Hopital again. Limit, x goes to infinity. Derivative of the top is just 3. Over derivative of the bottom, the 2 comes for the ride. e to the x squared, derivative of e to the x squared is itself. There it is, times derivative of what was up here, 2x. And now let me try and let x go to infinity again. The top just stays at 3. And the bottom is like e to the infinity, which is infinite, times 2 times infinity, that's basically infinity times infinity, 2 times infinity, that's infinite, so you get infinity here. So you have a fixed number over infinity, that means the top's staying the same, the bottom's getting huge, the fraction gets small, this goes to zero. <clears throat> there you go. Twenty-six. Limit x goes to zero from the right. Sine x times natural log x. All right. Plug in zero. Sine of zero, zero. Natural log of zero. Well, we're approaching zero from the right. Here's your natural log function. As we come in from the right to zero, it goes to negative infinity. So this gives me the form of zero, that's this, times negative infinity. That is not good, so I'm going to take one of those and drop it down. Now which one do I drop? Well, I'm going to choose to drop the sign. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because if I drop the sign, it's one over sign. And I know that's cosecant. And if I drop the natural log, then it's come one over natural log, and that might be a little harder to take derivative of. So, just rewriting now. All right. I can double check it. As x goes to zero, natural log of zero, as we come in from the right, we know that that's headed towards negative infinity, over cosecant of zero. So you could look up your graph of cosecant if you want, or you could just graph it real quick. Remember, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So here's the sine curve. That's sine. And then to graph cosecant, what we did was at every x-intercept, we draw an asymptote. And then from the peak of the sine curve, we draw these little like u's. That's what cosecant looks like. That's from pre-cal. And I want to know what happens at cosecant of zero as we approach um, zero from the right. So here's cosecant, here's zero, approach it from the right, we go to positive infinity. So we have infinity over infinity, basically, and we can now do L'Hopital. L'Hopital, Derivative of natural log of x, 1 over x. Derivative of cosecant x. 
is negative cosecant x cotangent x. Eee. That does not look like that got any better. That looks like it got uglier. All right, I'm going to have major problems. If I try and let x go to zero right here, I have fixed over zero. That's going to become infinite. And then down here, I'm going to have some issues too. Whoa. Okay, so let me try something before I go on. Let me, let me rewrite this. I have limit x goes to zero from the right. I have one over x over negative, okay, cosecant is one over sine x times cotangent, which is cosine x over sine x. All I'm doing is rewriting. I'm not doing any L'Hopital right now. One over x over negative cosine x over sine squared x. What I did is I created a fraction over a fraction so I could flip it and do reciprocal, all that stuff. I'm trying to get an idea of what this thing does. See if I can do L'Hopital again. Okay, so when I flip this up, the sine squared x goes on top, the negative cosine x goes on the bottom. And so I have sine squared x over negative, let me put the negative up here, it doesn't matter if the negative is on top or bottom, x cosine x on the bottom. What happens is x goes to zero. If x goes to zero, we get sine of zero, which is zero, squared, zero, negative, zero, so, so it's zero on top. And then zero times cosine of zero is one, so this is zero over zero. I'm really hesitant to do L'Hopital again, because I could probably get this without L'Hopital. But I'm going to do it, because the section is about L'Hopital. I have to take derivative of the top, and that's chain rule, because it's something squared. So the, the negative stays, the 2 comes out, sine x, so that drops the 2 out, times derivative of the inside, which is derivative of the sine, which is cosine, over, now we have down here a product rule. Derivative of the first one is 1 times cosine x plus derivative of the second one, which is negative sine x, so I'm going to put minus sine x, that, times the first one, which is x. Ugh, this does not look like it's getting any better. Let's let x go to zero. Sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one. That top is zero over, ooh, cosine of zero is one minus sine of zero, zero, times zero, that's all just minus zero. This is, this is zero over one, the answer is zero. That's awesome. It worked. What number was this? 26? All right, let's look at 27. Limit x goes to 1 from the right. Natural log x times tangent of pi x over 2. I'm going to write that as pi over 2x. That's the same thing. All right, as x goes to 1, natural log of 1 is 0. So that's headed towards... 0 times, all right, let's let x be 1, pi over 2, tangent of pi over 2. Here's your tangent function, here's pi over 2. We have that asymptote, it's headed towards infinity there, so that's infinite. Okay, so I've got to pick one of these and drop it. Ugh. See, here's the reason I'm hesitating to drop the natural log down. If I drop it down, it's 1 over natural log x. And if I have to take derivative of this, that's going to require either quotient rule or me bringing this whole thing up as natural log x, the entire thing to the negative 1, and then doing chain rule on it. I'm hesitant to do that. I would prefer to drop the tangent down. If I drop the tangent down, it would be 1 over tangent. That's cotangent. That might be a little easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave the natural log upstairs. 
not doing any L'Hopital. I'm just rewriting natural log x over 1 over tangent pi over 2x, which is the same as the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of natural log x over cotangent, uh, not cosine, I wish, uh, cotangent of pi over 2x. All right, so I already know what happens is, is x goes to 1. Natural log of 1 is 0, so the top is headed towards 0. And then if x is 1, cotangent of pi over 2 times 1, that's cotangent of pi over 2. Remember, if we go to the graph of cotangent, here's pi. Here's pi over 2. And it went like this and like that. So this bottom part, as you can see, at pi over 2 is 0. So we have 0 of 0. That's good news. We can try L'Hopital now. So that will be equal to, by L'Hopital's rule, limit as x approaches 1 from the right of the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x, over the derivative of cotangent of something. The derivative of cotangent of something is negative cosecant squared of that something times <clears throat> the derivative of what's inside. And that's a constant in front of x. So we're just going to get the constant, pi over 2. Man, I'm really hoping that that helps. Let's let x go to 1. 1 over 1, that's 1 on top. OK, I'm, I'm good with that. I hope this is not 0, though. All right, so if I plug in, if I plug in 1 here, I get pi over 2. Let's look at cosecant of pi over 2. Cosecant of pi over 2 is the same as 1 over sine of pi over 2. And remember, pi over 2 is up here. Sine of pi over 2 is the y-coordinate. That's 1. Yes. So this is cosecant, right? This is 1 over 1. Cosecant of pi over 2 is 1 over 1. So this right here is just 1, and then I square it. That's 1, and then put a negative in front. That's negative 1, and then put pi over 2. So I get negative pi over 2 here. And then 1 over a fraction means you can flip it. So you should get negative 2 over pi. Bam. Number 27. Number, and I'm out of time. 1, 2, 3, 4. Dang it. All right. This is a good place to stop. I still need to do a few problems. Oh well. Adios. Gonna finish up the uh, homework set here for 3.7. We're working on number 29. Limit x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1. All right, so if x goes to 0, 1 over 0, and we're approaching 0 from the right, so this is going to be a small positive number. This looks like fixed over 0, <clears throat> both of them being positive. It's going to go to positive infinity. So this goes to infinity here, minus, now, e to the 0 is approaching 1. All right, uh, let, me, let me draw e. Here's e. At 0, it's 1. But we're approaching 0 from the right. So we're always a little bit above 1. Um, coming in like this, the y value is always a little above 1. So this number right here is approaching 1, but it's always a little bit bigger than 1. And then we subtract 1. This is going to be a very, very small positive number. OK, 
Okay, it's approaching zero, but it's, it's positive because that number is bigger than that number. So that's a very small positive number. And so you have a fixed number over something approaching zero, but it's always positive. That's a positive over a positive. That's going to give you positive infinity again. So you have fixed over zero, both being positive. So it's the same situation as this one. Um, so this is going to be infinity over here. So we have basically the form of infinity minus infinity. All right. If you have infinity minus infinity, what we're going to do here, because we have fractions, is we are going to try to get a common denominator. So I will multiply the top and bottom of this one here by x, and I'll multiply the top and bottom of this one here by e to the x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1, and that'll give me my common denominator, and I'll put them together. So not doing any, any uh, L'Hopital or anything yet. I'm just trying to uh, convert this. If I do e to the x minus 1 times 1, I get e to the x minus 1. And then if I do x times 1, I get x, and I'm subtracting that, so minus x, all over my common denominator, which is now this times this. So I write x times e to the x minus 1, like that. Now if I just check to see what's happening here, as x goes to 0, this is approaching 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus, this is approaching 0, so 0. So I have 0 minus 0, that's 0 on top. And then e to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That's approaching 0 also, so the bottom is approaching 0. So I've transformed a problem that once looked like infinity minus infinity, just algebraically into a new problem where it's in, uh, 0 over 0. That allows me to use L'Hopital's rule. So I come in here with L'Hopital. I take the derivative of the top, derivative of e to the x is itself. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of x is uh, 1, so it's minus 1 there. Over, now on the bottom you have to be a little careful because you have a product rule. You could also distribute this through, but you'd still have a product rule. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Derivative of the first one is 1 times this one. So e to the x minus 1. Plus the derivative of this one, which is just e to the x, times the first one. All right, so let's see what happens here. We have x goes to 0, e to the 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, the top is 0. The bottom, uh, let's see here, we've got e to the x, that's going to be e to the 0, that's 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, e to the 0 is 1 times 0, so we get 0 on the bottom again. I'm not liking the looks of this. Limit, x goes to 0, I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule again. Um, yeah, I'll just do it just the way it is here. <clears throat> Derivative of the top. Okay, so derivative of the top is just e to the x. Derivative of the bottom, I have to do term by term. And this is a product rule right there between those two. So derivative of e to the x is itself. Derivative of 1 is 0. Now product rule. Derivative of the first one. Uh, so this is plus. The first one is just e to the x times x plus. Now derivative of this one, 1 times that, e to the x again. It looks like this is getting messier, but notice at this point that I can factor an e to the x out of the denominator. These all have e to the x in them, so I factor out an e to the x. I'm left with a 1 here, an x here, and a 1 here. And then I can cancel these e to the x's out, put a 1 there, and now let x go to 0. And you can see that if I let x go to 0, this is going to go to 0. I'm going to get 1 over 1 plus 1. It's going to be 1 half. So I had to do L'Hopital's rule twice there. <clears throat> twice? Three times? What was that? Once? Twice? Yeah, just twice. But I had to manipulate things algebraically first and then stick with the L'Hopital until I could get that e to the x to cancel. So infinity minus infinity, we turned it into 0 over 0 by collecting and getting a common denominator. 
31. Limit x goes to infinity. x minus natural log x. All right, so what happens is x goes to infinity. Well, this goes to infinity minus natural log of infinity. So take a look at the natural log function. Here it is. And we know that as you go to infinity, this thing grows without bound. It goes up to infinity. So we know that this goes to infinity also. All right, so infinity minus infinity, we need to work on that. Now on the last one, we got a common denominator, and on this one, we can't because there's no fractions. But what I will do is I will try and turn this <coughs> subtraction into multiplication by factoring. So I'm going to factor an x out, even though it doesn't look like I can. This will be a one. Minus, now if I factor an x out of here, even though there's not an x there, I could write it like this. Now that's a little tricky, but let's just check to see what happens here. If I multiply this through, I get x, that's this. Then this goes over to this, and the x that's here is going to cancel out with the x here, and you'll be left with natural log x. So that's a clever way of factoring out an x. And now let me just check to see what happens here. As x goes to infinity, this is infinity, so I have infinity times over here, all right, 1 minus, now natural log of infinity, that goes to infinity, so this little piece goes to infinity, on the bottom it goes to infinity. So I need to figure out what that's going to. I don't know what it's going to yet, so I'm going to do a little work on the side here. This is like scratch work. I'm trying to figure out what's happening to this as x goes to infinity. So I'm, I'm focusing all my attention on this piece so I can figure out what this is. Now here we have infinity over infinity. So I can use L'Hopital's rule within my scratch work. I'm using L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to take the derivative of the top, derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, and then derivative of the bottom which is 1. Now I don't need that 1 on the bottom, so this is just 1 over x. And as x goes to infinity, this gets big, the numerator stays the same, so you have a fixed over infinity, that goes to zero. This goes to zero, so that goes to zero. We know that this limit goes to zero. And um, what happens here is you get infinity times one minus zero is one. Infinity times one is just infinity. So this limit is infinite. Okay, 33. Limit x goes to 0 from the right. Of x raised to the root x. All right. So what's happening here? This is, we, these problems are very different than what we've done before. Um, we're going to get a different type of um, uh, indeterminate form. I, I think I said x goes to infinity. I meant to say x goes to 0. So what happens? This goes to 0, so we have 0 on the bottom. And then it's being raised to the square root of 0, which is still 0. 0 to the 0, that is an indeterminate form. And the reason it is is because we know that anything raised to the 0 should be 1 but zero to any power should be zero. And remember, these are approaching zero. They're not actually zero. That's a little positive number. That's a little positive number. And so there's a battle going on. I talk about this in class, but that is something we cannot just say, oh, the answer is this. We have to do something. But because both the, both the base and the exponent are both functions of x, um, we're not going to be able to handle this the way we have in the past. We have to do something special. And this is what I showed in class. We call this limit, we just call it something. Let's call it y. We want to know what y is, right? Y is what we want to figure out. And now, because I've created this equation, I'm going to do the natural log on both sides. And when you do the natural log of a limit of something, the natural log can pass through the limit. 
So here's my natural log, and I'm doing natural log of this, like that. And the reason I do that is because I can now use the property of logs to drop this out in front. So this becomes natural log y. So I have to write the equation down. Natural log of y equals limit as x goes to 0 from the right of root x that dropped out in front times natural log of x. So there's my dropping of the exponent. And now let me just take a look at what's happening. As x goes to 0, I get square root of 0. That's going to 0 times natural log of 0. We're approaching 0 from the right. Natural log does that. You can see as you approach 0, it heads out to negative infinity. And 0 times negative infinity is still an indeterminate form, but we know how to handle this one. To do this one, we pick one of these and we drop it down to the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as, I'm going to leave the natural log x on top. I'm going to rewrite this on the bottom as 1 over root x. Of course, that would flip back up and become this, but by doing it this way, it's going to behave exactly the way I want. If I let x go to 0 from the right, we know that this part up here goes to infinity. And then we know that 1 over 0, and this is a positive number, right, because we're approaching 0 from the right. This is a tiny positive number. That's a fixed positive number. Fixed over 0 goes to one of three things, but in this case, because they're both positive, we know it's positive infinity. So now we have infinity over infinity. So let's just recap real quick. We started out with a form that was 0 to the 0. We knew we couldn't do that. We had to do natural log on both sides. We dropped the exponent out front. Then we get 0 times negative infinity. We still can't do that, but we can convert that to infinity over infinity by dropping it. And now I can use L'Hopital's rule. So what I'll do is I will write, still, I still need to write the equation. This natural log of y should be equal to this, and I'm going to use L'Hopital, so I'm going to put, by L'Hopital's rule, that's equal to this limit. Now I'm taking derivative of the top, which is 1 over x, over the derivative of the bottom. So I need to take the derivative of this. So let me just remind you what that is. 1 over root x, I need that derivative. That's the same as 1 over x to the half derivative which is the same as x to the negative one-half derivative. I need, I need to do that. So I can just use power rule here. This is going to be negative one-half, x to the negative three-halves. Right, so power comes out, I subtract one. And that's just really negative one over, um, let's go two x to the three-halves. So I just drop the negative exponent down and it joins the two. I'm going to use that. That's what's going to be down here for the derivative. Negative one over two x to the three halves. And the reason I didn't try and convert that back into a radical is because I, I realize that on top I have one over x. I'm going to take this and flip it, right, reciprocal. So this is going to be times, when I flip this, the two x to the three halves goes on top, and then the negative one goes on the bottom, and then I can get rid of that. And so now, I'll write it all down again. I have that the natural log of y equals limit, as x goes to 0 from the right, of 2x to the 3 halves. It's just multiplying straight across here, and then multiply straight across the bottom, negative x. And I can actually clean that up a little more, right? That's x to the 3 halves over x to the 1. You subtract, you get x to the half. Right? 3 halves minus 1 is a half. So this just turns into, my goodness, I haven't taken the limit yet. So I have a 2, I have a negative down here. So how about I just make that negative 2? And then this right here became this, which is really just square root of x. All right. Let's let x go to 0. That goes to 0. That's 0. That kills this whole thing. This whole thing is 0. Natural log of y equals 0. This is not our answer. Remember, in the very beginning of the problem, we said, hey, let's call this something. And we called it y. And then we came in with the natural log. So we want to know what y is. We know that natural log of y is 0. So to get y out of the natural log, 
we're going to use the inverse of natural log, which is e. We're going to take e and raise it to the natural log of y. On this side, we do e raised to this side of the equation. And so you're basically like composing both sides of the equation um, with the inverse of natural log. e to the natural log of y is y, and then e to the 0 is 1. So y must be 1, which means the answer to this is 1. That's a good problem right there. All right, 35. Limit x goes to 0 of 1 minus 2x raised to the 1 over x. So let's see what happens as x approaches 0. Hmm. All right, so in here, as x approaches 0, this is going to become very small, right? And, well, that's going to approach 0. And 1 minus 0, that's going to be approaching 1. So the base is wanting to be 1. And then we have, as x goes to 0, we have fixed over 0, which is going to be either infinity, negative infinity, or does not exist. Now, they don't tell us which side of 0 to come in on which is a little concerning to me. Um, but let's just take a look. If we came in, if we approach 0 from the right, then this would be a positive number over a very small positive number. That would approach infinity. So 1 over x would approach infinity. And then what we would have here is, is 1 being raised to the infinity, which is an indeterminate form. And the reason it's indeterminate, remember from class, is that this is approaching 1. It's not 1, right? This is approaching 1. This is approaching infinity. And so this wants to make this, when you raise something to a big power, it wants to make it bigger, right? If this is bigger than 1, it makes it bigger. If it's smaller than 1, it makes it smaller. So this is a confusing problem. I, I can really see how a student would get uh, messed up with this. Um, how can I help this? Um, well, let's just, let, for now, let's just agree that that's indeterminate. Let's, let's now approach 0 from the other side and <clears throat> see what would happen. 1 over x, well, this would be 1 over a fixed number that's positive over a very small negative number, and this would approach negative infinity. And then we would get something like this. Um, I'll put this one over here. This was 1 to the infinity. This one was 1 to the negative infinity, which is the same as 1 over... 1 to the infinity. So I could drop it down. And we're still going to have the same problem here that what does this go to? We don't, we don't know what that goes to. Um, so 1 over it, we won't know what that goes to. So we still, either way, we, we have a problem. Um, the only issue that I have is whether or not that number here is bigger than 1 or smaller than 1. So if I start, if I start plugging in numbers that are really small here, Right, approaching zero. If this is really small number, let's say it's like 0.000001. If I take one and I subtract 0.000001, this number is actually going to be smaller than one. So this number right here is a little bit, little bit smaller than one. And when you raise it to a big power, um, what's that? When you raise it to a big power, that should actually get smaller. Hmm. Curious to see what they have as an answer to this one. 35. Negative 2. Okay, well, let's work, let's work it. Because the base is trying to become 1, all right? So 1 to any power should be 1. This guy is trying to make it either bigger or smaller, depending on if this is bigger than 1 or smaller than 1. I know I'm confusing you, all right? Um, so let's, let's just work through this, all right? This is an indeterminate form. You have a base that involves x. You have an exponent that involves x. We've agreed it's indeterminate. Either way we look at it. So let's go ahead and go about this. The same way we did the previous problem, we're going to call this thing y. So let's call this y. And let's take natural log on both sides. 
I'll pass the natural log through the limit. The natural log will come out here like that. And then I'm going to drop this out front. So when I drop that out front, get one over X like that times that. Okay. So what happens here is X goes to zero. This is either going to go to positive or negative infinity, depending on which side I come in on. And this right here, if that's zero, natural log of one is zero. So now it looks like either infinity times zero or negative infinity times zero. Either way, that's a problem. That's indeterminate. But we know how to handle this. To handle this, we drop one of those down. So I'm going to say natural log y equals limit x goes to zero from the right, uh, not from the right, x goes to zero of natural log of one minus two x is going to be on top. And then I'm taking one over x and I'm dropping it down as one over one over x, which is really just x, right? Just flip that right there. That's just x. Now you could have seen that right now. Like if you just rewrite this, you could just write this whole thing over x and it's the same expression. But I was just trying to use that same idea of taking that and dropping it down. You do one over whatever's here, but it still gives us just x. Now as x goes to zero, we already know this is natural log of one. Natural log of one goes to zero, the bottom goes to zero, and we're in business. L'Hopital's rule. Natural log y equals L'Hopital's rule. This, I'm going to take derivative of the top. Derivative of natural log of something is one over one minus two x. So that's, that's one over what was inside times chain rule derivative of what's in here. Derivative one is zero, derivative of negative two x is negative two. And that's all over the derivative of x, which is one. And now if I let x go to infinity, I mean, sorry, <coughs> go to zero, that's zero. So you get one minus zero is one. One over one is one. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 over 1 is negative 2. So this, this right here, this limit, when we let x go to 0, this whole side over here becomes negative 2. And now, same thing as before, we want to know what y is, right? We know the natural log of y is this. So we do um, e to the natural log of y must equal e to the negative 2. These cancel, and you get y equals e to the negative 2. And that's your answer. So this limit is approaching e to the negative 2. As x goes to 0, it's going to that. You could also write that as 1 over e squared. All right, sorry about that in the beginning. Uh, I was trying to make it a little more complicated than it had to be. But uh, all right. Um, you should look at the rest of the problems there. You should look at 34, 36, 37, 38. Those are good problems. We are done.